A few days ago, I purchased this little piece of equipment called the Axino Microphone by uh, Antelope Audio. It's actually a, a pretty good uh, emulator for, uh, you know, vintage uh, and legendary microphones and other audio gear like, you know, compressors, equalizers, etc. And so I thought I would do this video to um, uh, show how to connect it to your computer and use it with your favorite DAW. Here, uh, I'm going to use Cubase on a Mac, but I'm pretty sure it works uh, the same way with other DAWs like Pro Tools on Windows or whatever. Um, so the first thing you need to do is obviously to launch the, the software by Antelope Audio, which is called the Antelope uh, Launcher here. And once you've done that, you can uh, launch the what they call the control panel here for the Axino microphone. And that brings uh, this uh, that brings up this little black box here with all these bells and whistles here. Now, uh, on the Mac, what's, once you have done that, you need to create what they call an aggregate uh, audio device to combine, you know, for instance, your mixer um, input-output buses with the Axino uh, input-output buses here. Uh, and so uh, in order to do that, you just create a new device, you know, which is basically a virtual device which combines um, existing uh, real devices. And, uh, and you give it a name. And here I chose, once I combined them, I chose to use the Axino clock source and a sample rate of 48 kilohertz, which I'm going to use also in the project uh, uh, with Cubase. Now, uh, once, um, sorry, once you've done that, um, well, then you, you launch Cubase. And in Cubase, well, you have to tell it what kind of hardware you're going to use and, and, and software drivers that go with it. Um, so what, what you do is you go to the studio uh, setup here. And of course, you select the, um, the aggregate device that you just created. Once you've done that, uh, you have to specify the buses that you're going to use. Um, so here I have these various uh, uh, output buses. There's a regular one, which typically will go to the output of your mixing table uh, and, and then to your speakers. And, and in addition to that, I created uh, two uh, extra stereo buses for, for the Axino. I call them Axino in 1-2 and Axino in 3-4. Uh, because there are inputs to uh, the microphone. <laughs> because this microphone is not just a microphone, it's also a device, an audio device connected to, the, um, uh, to your computer with a USB cable, and you can send it some uh, audio in order to insert some of the, uh, uh, of the equipment that it's emulating. Um, so that's for the output and for the input, of course, uh, since it's also a microphone, uh, you have, again, two stereo channels here that are provided by Antelope Audio, and so you have to define them here as stereo buses. So make sure that the numbers you use here correspond to whatever you have defined uh, in your aggregate device here. Okay, so this is a studio uh, I mean, the mixer um, output channels. These four here are the Axino output channels. And then there is this little software uh, device here that's actually the audio capture for this video. OK, so um, once you've done that, uh, you're all set to create some uh, audio tracks in your uh, in your doll. So here, I'm using audio track. I mean, there are several ways to use it, of course, but I chose to create audio tracks so that I can, you know, use the doll facilities. You know, the doll, doll features like uh, recording what I'm sending to it, or uh, adding insert effects or send effects. Uh, et cetera, et cetera. Well, the usual uh, jazz. But before we uh, we dive into the, um, um, the, the Cubase project, 
I want to show you the architecture that we're going to use. Um, so this reflects what we've done uh, in Cubase, you know, preparing the buses. So these are the input buses uh, that will go into the DAW, into Cubase, which I call USB 1, 2 output and USB 3, 4 output because they are output from the Axino device. And these are the two um, output output buses that uh, uh, we can uh, send from the door to the Axino device, which is why I call them input uh, USB one two input and USB three four input. So uh, obviously the, the the main use of the Axino microphone is to send. Uh, the audio from the microphone, uh, optionally to use some mic modeling and some effects like you know compressors and and equalizers, uh, which are built in the the Axino device itself, and then send the result of that uh, to uh, one of the buses that we have defined in Cubase, and by default they will go to USB one two bus. Uh, from the microphone to uh, Cubase. Now, uh, you also have uh, the option of, well, first of all, you can always bypass, uh, in all cases, uh, these, these effects here, uh, but you, you can also uh, define a special path here, which goes directly to the other uh, stereo bus that we call the USB 3.4, uh, again, from Axino to Do. So these are the two ways that I will show you in Cubase. So just remember, you know, how it looks like. Uh, but then uh, we, what we can also do, because the, the Axino microphone is not just a microphone, it's, uh, it's actually an audio device. You can send some uh, audio to it so that it can apply some uh, built-in effects and then send them back uh, to uh, the 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 door, the Cubase, like here, for instance, uh, you would output from some tracks uh, in Cubase. You would output it to the Axino using the USB interface, and and then the Axino will apply some effects that you can pick and can be different from the other inputs here, and then send it back to the the door. Just, just like any insert uh, using the, for instance here, the, uh, the USB 1.2 output bus. Output again, which is an input to Cubase. And similarly, you, you have another input here, uh, f uh, which can be sent to the Axino from an audio track, for instance. And again, you can apply some different effects and then send the result in parallel to uh, the other input bus in Cubase, which is the USB 3.4 output from Axino here. So this is what we're going to do uh, with, uh, with Cubase here. So in order to do that, um, I want to use some tracks because, you know, I, I mean, there are many ways to do it, but uh, using tracks like this is, is good because you can, you know, use all the dull features like uh, recording stuff or or sending audio to an external device, which is what we're going to do too. Um, so the first thing is to create uh, one audio track here. It will have, again, you know, the Axino Out 1, 2 output um, as an input here, and the result will be sent to the stereo out, which basically is your mixer, and which is how you can hear my voice. Here, when I talk, you know, it's it's output here from from the Axino uh, device, and then it goes to the, the the track here, and from that track, it it's sent to the stereo out. Uh, and you know, like for instance, if I change, for instance, if I decide to remove all the effects which are uh, in the path here of the Axino output. Well, first of all, you can see I'm emulating right now uh, what is probably a Shure 7B. And uh, also I've added some, uh, um, well, standard, uh, well, no, actually it's a preset from Axino, but I, I could 
choose whatever I want. And there's a de-esser and then there's all these equipments here that you can see, which are vintage equipment, but pretty, pretty good quality, pretty high quality. And they did a, a very good job to emulate those. Uh, but if I want to, I can bypass them all. And so my voice is now different. Uh, and of course, it will be even more different if I change here the microphone type and use, for instance, uh, the Axino direct output here. Move back. OK, sorry. Yeah, I can move back to the uh, uh, preset here. There you go. And I am back with uh, the Shure microphone and all the nice uh, vintage equipment here for my voice. OK, now let's try and use a different path to record my voice. So far, um, we've used this red path here, you know, from the microphone. We went through the mic modeling to get the sure modeling uh, and then some um, effects. And then we send that to USB 1.2 output from the X, you know, to the Cubase. But uh, what we are going to do now is uh, use a different path here, you use the blue pass, which means we'll have the direct access to the Axino microphone. We will bypass all the modeling here and send it to USB 3.4 output from the Axino uh, to Cubase. So let's see how we do that. Well, it's fairly easy. First, we have to define what will be selected uh, to uh, USB 3.4, and here we select uh, the raw mic output. So in other words, we bypass the effects. And then, as you can hear, there is quite a difference. And you can see now this uh, volume here, um, because we're listening to the uh, Axino out 3.4 which is input to this track here, as is, is shown here. Um, and, um, and of course, I can go back to the, the initial setup like this. And this, of course, comes from the 1, 2. So we're back to the red uh, path here. So what we've done so far is that we output some sound from the Axino microphone with or without um, the sound effects and mic modeling. And we've output those, that sound through two different outputs here. But let's see how we can input things into this uh, device now by using the input ports here and and we're going to see that, uh, you know, for instance, if we output whatever is done here with this to USB 1.2 output uh, and see the difference with what's done here using uh, 3.4 input to 3.4 output here using the blue line here, the blue path. Uh, so here <clears throat> we're going to listen to something first without reverb here. Uh, this is a recording to be sent to Axino channels 1 and 2 to insert some Axino effects. And now with reverb, Uh, this is a recording to be sent to Axino channels 1 and 2 to insert some Axino effects. So what happens here is that whatever is played here is sent to the uh, Axino input 1, 2, uh, to which I add some reverb here. This is the 1, 2 here. You should not forget to send it using this little button here. And so it's sent back from the Axino to the track here via the output uh, from the Axino. OK. Uh, and we can do something different on 3.4. OK, let's listen to what happens here. Uh, here in 3.4, I've added um, an equalizer 
with this equalizer here. See, I exaggerated the, the high frequency and the low frequency. This is a recording to be sent to Axino channels 3 and 4 to insert some different effects. And I could bypass this it. This is a recording to be sent to Axino channels 3 and 4 to insert some different effects. So this should give you an idea on you know how to use the Axino device with, uh, with your doll. Uh, here, in this case, uh, Cubase Pro. The Axino solution actually provides quite interesting and uh, quality options for a reasonable price. Uh, the, the algorithms to emulate both the legendary mics and vintage compressors, EQs, etc., uh, have visibly been designed with care. And, and, and the high quality D2A and A2D converters um, combined with a 192 kilohertz 24 bit option. Um, that should guarantee a good sound restitution. Maybe I, I wish there would be a possibility to buy more effects options, you know, more uh, um, different vintage compressors, equalizers, uh, preamps, etc. And I, I also wish that the mic emulation uh, were available for the USB 1, 2, and 3, 4 uh, channels, you know, and not just for the Axino channel. But other than that, again, you know, I think it's it's quite an interesting and, and pretty flexible solution. Um, good quality for, for a reasonable price. So anyway, I, I hope this was useful to you and uh, thank you for watching.